Um, well, hi to everyone. I hope you're having a really good Sunday. Um, I just wanted to really thank the teenagers, first of all, because I've absolutely loved this Attributes of God series that Ablaze have been doing. Fantastic to hear from you all. Really wonderful. Um, also, just to say that Daniel from Barnsbury, on Yekas Daniel, um, was the only one from Flame who learnt the verse that we get. We gave a challenge last week for you guys to learn Psalm 121, verse 2. And Daniel's learnt that, so we're just going to hear from him now. Psalm 121, verse 2 says, My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. So uh, I want to encourage other other children to learn this verse. We need to see your lovely faces, your dear faces, um, on Sunday morning. So um, have a go. If you're in flame, come on, guys. Have a go at learning that verse. Get your mum or dad to record it. Psalm 121, verse 2. My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And uh, we talked last week about George Muller, how he learnt to read the Bible in the most amazing way. And I just want to say for myself that during this lockdown time, as I've studied and read more of Muller's um, book, um, my own heart's been very touched and I've felt like I'm reading the Bible. I am reading the Bible in a way I've never read it before. It's reaching my heart in a way it's never reached me before. So um, I've been very excited myself about that. So this is George Muller, part five, I think. Um, by now you probably know the story. He was born just over 200 years ago in Prussia. He was a wild young man. He was a rebel. He gambled. He drank heavily. He cheated people. He stole money, ended up in prison. And then incredibly at university as a young man, he goes to a prayer meeting and he finds what his heart is searching for. And he has an encounter with God um, and offers his life to him. He then feels that God is calling him to this country, to England, uh, where he had to learn the language and everything. Um, and here in this country, he meets with others who are whose hearts are on fire, whose hearts God has touched, um, and he further offers his life to God. And he believes that God wants him to live by faith, to simply receive offerings. So he ended up in Bristol uh, with his great friend, Brother Craig, where they um, were doing a work there in the chapel, Bethesda Chapel, and they lived purely from the offerings that were given. They didn't have salaries. Um, they trusted God to provide food and money and their rent and everything. And there in Bristol, we heard the story how he began an orphanage for uh, the girls first, as a picture of them, and then the boys. Um, and here's a picture of Wilson Street where... Um, in the end they had three houses in that street um, and they had 82 children and about 10 helpers so there were over 90 people living in three houses um, and this was this was all wonderful and there was a lot going on um, in the church but then he gets this letter and this is where we finished last time he gets a letter from a neighbor and apparently it was a polite and friendly letter but it said Mr Muller we've got a problem the noise is too great in the street. I live in Wilson Street, the letter said, and the noise is too much from all these children and the drains are smelling bad um, and we, we, we've, we, need, we need you to do something. So he began to pray, um, having received this letter in October 1845. Um, he prayed and he also wrote down two lists. He was a very practical man. He wrote down a list of reasons why they should stay in Wilson Street. And then he wrote down a list of reasons why they should move. Um, and increasingly, he was leaning towards the idea that they needed to move out of Wilson Street. He remembered back to how he'd started the orphanages and why he'd started them. He'd started them because he wanted to prove to doubting Christians uh, that God was the living God who could still provide everything that they needed in their lives, whatever was happening. And he also wanted to care for the orphans. Do you remember there had been outbreaks of cholera and there were further outbreaks um, of this disease called cholera? not unlike the coronavirus, it was sweeping across the country um, and he wanted to care for the children who'd been left without parents. Um, and so he began to think, yes, we're going to do this. And he came to God in prayer and he said, Lord, we need £10,000. Um, and that was the equivalent of about um, a quarter of a million pounds. He thought, this is what we're going to need. Um, in order to set up this orphanage, this this bigger orphanage. We want it for more children. 
Um, and a friend of his came to stay with him at that point, And he said, come on, George, let's not just pray for £10,000. Let's pray that God will provide an architect as well. And so they prayed over several weeks and absolutely no money came in. Not a shilling, not a farthing. Money came to provide for Wilson Street, but nothing for this new building venture. And then on day 36, after they'd started praying, suddenly they received a gift of £1,000. That was the equivalent of 25000 in our money. Uh, incredible gift. They'd never had such a, last, uh, such a large gift as this. Um, and then just after that, three days later, on day 39, since they'd started praying, an architect from London wrote to them and said, nothing would give me greater pleasure than to come and be an architect for this project that I've heard about. Um, I, don't want, I won't want any fee for it. I will come and do everything for you for free. And so George Muller thought, we are on our way. So he started to look for land and then discovered um, that land was very expensive in Bristol at that time, probably still is now. Um, and so he looked around and, and he was told, well, it's a thousand pounds an acre. You're going to have to pay a thousand pounds an acre. Uh, and he had, he'd got a big vision for this project. He wanted seven acres because he wanted to build a big orphan house where they could house ultimately hundreds of orphans. He wanted space for the children to play. He wanted to build um, laundries inside the place. He wanted schoolrooms. Um, he wanted them out away from the soot and the pollution in the city. He wanted it to be outside the city. Um, and he wanted this, this sanatorium where the very sick ones could be cared for away from the others. Um, and he wanted to look after them um, and for it to be a really amazing place. He just didn't want to build some small place. He got a big vision. That's why he needed seven acres of land. And then about six months later, he suddenly heard that there was land available in a place called Ashley Down. We've got a picture of it and these green fields just outside on a hill outside the city of Bristol and that it was going to be sold for 200 acres, to, sorry, 200 pounds an acre instead of the normal 1,000 pounds per acre. And so he rushed in as much as Mr. Muller probably ever rushed anywhere to the man's house who was selling the land. Um, and when he got there, the people there said, oh, sorry, no, no, he's not here. He's still at work. But if you go quickly, you'll find him at work. So he hurried back to where the man worked. And when he got there, they said, sorry uh, about this, but he's just left. You've just missed him. And then he thought, hang on a minute. Uh, this is God's project. I need to pray about this. So he went home that night and they prayed about the land and they asked God about it and the next morning he went to the man's house again and the man said oh Mr Muller I've got the messages from you and George Muller said to him I want to buy this land on Ashley Down for 200 pounds an acre I, I want to buy seven acres and the man said well the thing is he said last night I had a restless night. I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and I couldn't get back to sleep till five o'clock in the morning. And all I could think about with this was this land. And I thought, I've got to sell this land to Mr. Muller, not for £200 an acre, but for £120 an acre. So for £840, George Muller bought all the land he needed with that first £1,000. Um, he, he, he must have said it's a deal and shaken the man's hand or however they did it in those days but by the time he left that house he'd got that land um, and so the whole project could really begin it took them about three years for the rest of the money to come in do you remember they didn't appeal for money they just prayed that God would provide um, and then in June 1849 we've got a fantastic picture here there's a drawing of that first orphan house look at that it was open it looks like a stately home this wasn't some small project. It was the most wonderful orphanage um, that, that he'd imagined and he's envisaged. And, and so on, in June, the last week of June, 1849, they moved 140 uh, children and their overseers and teachers uh, into the orphan house. And at the end of that week in June, he sits down and he writes in his diary. Um, it's a Saturday evening, June the 23rd, 1849. Um, he, he writes in his diary <coughs> about what's happened um, and he looks back over his life and he's, his life so far, he's only 44 years old and he can hardly believe what God has done. This is such a wonderful thing, taken him from being really 
uh, not helpful to anyone, to being able to help many, many people. And so he wrote down, this has been a week of many mercies. We now have 140 children and their overseers under one roof. Um, I expected God's help concerning this venture, but he has gone beyond my expectations. His name is to be praised and my soul magnifies him for his goodness. And at the end of every year, for several years, they've been writing down something called a narrative. We've got a picture of one of the original narratives here. Um, and they called it Answers to Prayer. And they've been doing this for several years. And these narratives had gone out across the UK. And then they'd also gone out abroad as well to other countries. People were reading about these amazing answers to prayer that George Muller was receiving. And at the end of that year, this particular year, when they'd opened Orphan House Number 1 on Ashley Down, um, 1849, um, he, they wrote a list of all that God had done for them. Um, and this was, these were the things he wrote down for that year, that we have 329 children in our day schools being educated. That was in the actual city of Bristol. We have 168 children in our Sunday school at Bethesda Chapel. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine flame with 168 children in it? We've got 106, 106 adults who are um, in adult education with us being taught to read. We've sent out 131,464 Bibles and gospel messages. And then he writes a little note. He writes 2,574 pounds, 16 shillings and sixpence was given. So what was this money being given to, this extra amount of money that this church and these people are doing all these wonderful things and God is helping them and, and providing for them and they're, they're running orphanages and schools and yet there's something else that they're giving to, something else, a big amount of money equivalent to about £60,000 in today's money that was being given out for something else. And we're going to find out what that was next week. Okay, let's pray. Uh, Lord Jesus, we thank you uh, for the life of George Muller and all that you did uh, through his life and uh, the way you blessed others through him. And we're praying that you would use our lives, uh, praying that we would be useful to you, that you'd set our hearts on fire like you did his, that you'd help us to read the Bible and for it to come alive like it came alive for him. Uh, and that we would be a blessing to the people around us. Could we be a blessing even this week in our families, in our homes, uh, as we're still mostly at home in this lockdown? Lord, we pray and ask it in your name. Amen.